Over our last couple classes, we started talking about dating relationships. And within those dating relationships, we first talked about how we can resolve conflict in dating relationships and how that is a normal, healthy thing to have in a dating relationship. Um, and then we talked about the difference between a healthy and an unhealthy relationship. What we're going to start talking about today is how we can tell the difference between an unhealthy relationship and an abusive one. So really for you to understand dating violence at its worst, um, we do need you to start to identify with a couple of different characteristics and some warning signs within those dating relationships. So for today, really making sure that you're taking away the point where you know the difference between a relationship that's just unhealthy and icky and when it starts to turn abusive. Because there are some telltale signs of abusive relationships that are going to give you an idea of what you can look for either in a friend's relationship, maybe a sibling's relationship, or hopefully never, but maybe a relationship of your own. So here are two quick snapshots of how you can tell the difference between an unhealthy relationship and an abusive one. An unhealthy relationship just feels bad. Uh, people tend to hold grudges. You don't trust the person. You don't respect their decisions. You have a hard time getting along, etc. When it's an abusive relationship, you may have the same feelings as you did in the unhealthy one. However, the biggest difference is there is an element of fear that one person feels of the other. So these five warning signs of an abusive relationship are the things I want you to look at. Because, hey, you know, I just kind of thought our relationship was pretty crappy, but this is how you might know it turned abusive. Number one, are you afraid of making them angry? Number two, are you afraid to disagree with them? Number three, do you feel you need to ask permission to do things? Number four, are you afraid that they'll hurt you or something that you care about? And then finally, number five, are you afraid to break up with them for fear of what might happen in return? So there are also some red flags that we talk about when we have abusive relationships. Okay, And those six red flags are as follows. The person is constantly criticizing you, your intelligence, your self-worth. You feel like you can never do anything right. You show up to school one day and you're like sweats in a hoodie. And they look at you you're like, why are you dressing like such a slob? You never dress up for anyone anymore. The next day, what do you do? You get up a little early. You make sure you got the right outfit on. You show up to school again and you're looking all proud of yourself. And they say, who are you dressing up for? Who are you trying to impress? You can't win. Number two, they keep you from having friends. They try to isolate you, especially someone who might compete with their time. Okay, so when you're looking at it this way, we talked a lot about having that that balance between spending a lot of time with your significant other and not spending time with them at all. Here's where you have to be careful that you're not being isolated by your partner, meaning that when your relationship ends, you have no one to go back to. Number three, they act really jealous of you, especially when new people are trying to talk to you. They don't want anyone else in your life and they are capitalizing all of your time. And what will happen is that they will start to use their love for you or their care for you as an excuse for their bad behavior. Well, I just love you so much. I don't want anyone else to talk to you. Number four, they have prob problems controlling their temper and their anger, even if it's not directed at you. Okay, so maybe they do have your phone and they're looking through it and they're looking through your pictures and all of a sudden they're like, who's that? Who's talking to you there? And you're like, uh, I don't know. And you start to tell the story. Maybe it's kind of a funny story. They don't care. Okay, and they might take your phone and chuck it against the wall. They might throw it out in the yard okay, because they are so frustrated. Number five, they make threats against you or something that you care about. Like, Okay, so again, they might not threaten you, but if you have a friend that they don't really like, maybe they threaten that friend. And maybe it's a physical threat. Maybe it's something that they're going to spread a rumor. Those are all threats. Number six, they insist you do something sexual, even if you have told them no. Okay, and yes, this sexual act can be intercourse where that would be rape. However, there are other sexual acts that they force on you, even if it's kissing you, trying to snuggle with you and hold you down while they're hugging you. Okay, those are all sexual acts that are going to be violating if you have already told them no. So we're going to watch this video and it's called Because I Love You. Now, the campaign behind this is that's not love. So you're going to hear that throughout this entire video. So such a simple phrase can take on a different meaning in an abusive relationship. Because I love you. I want to be your only guy. 
Because I love you, skip class with me. Let's stay in bed today. Because I love you, I just want to be with you so freaking much. Because I love you. I waited for you after chem lab. You were walking with Mark? Because I love you. You shouldn't be hanging out with that dude. You should know how dumb that makes me look. I don't care if she's your lab partner. Why do you have texts from him? Because I love you. This number? Delete. Because I love you. This Jason number? Delete. And, and Ben? Delete. Because I love you, I should smash your phone. I'll let you give me your password instead. Because I love you. I will check your texts every day. You got lucky. Because I love you. Because I love you. You think it's okay. Because I love you. Y you understand. Because I love you, you stop talking to your classmates. And you feel completely alone. Because I love you. That's not love. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna download today's worksheet from Schoology. And what you're actually gonna use this worksheet for is to, for today's activity and also our next class. So what you're gonna need to do, because you're gonna need to watch a series of videos and work on your worksheet at the same time, I need you to split screen on your iPad, or if you have the advantage of being able to have two devices, use a device to watch the videos and then use your iPad to do the worksheet. Because on the next slides, you're gonna see a series of one minute videos. They're gonna show different examples of different styles of abuse that you could see in a relationship. Those 10 styles are listed here. We have guilting, belittling, betrayal, deflecting responsibility, isolation, intensity, volatility, jealousy, sabotage, and manipulation. So on that worksheet, what you're gonna see are the definitions and the warning sign. What you are going to write in here is evidence that you saw from the video that showed guilting. You're gonna write evidence that you saw from the video that shows belittling, betrayal, deflecting responsibility, isolation, intensity, volatility, jealousy, sabotage, and manipulation. Again, you can read the definition here of it or when you look at the slides, you're gonna see the definition on the left as well. So you are gonna watch those videos on your own. And again, you're gonna see a video and the definition for each one of these. And again, they're about a minute each and that is it. Some of them aren't even a minute, okay? And then you will be able to fill out that worksheet. Now, if you notice, there's another space for you to work on, and that is what you're gonna work on in our next class. So again, you'll see that lesson starting tomorrow. All right, you guys, have fun.